All right, in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at angle relationships that exist in the diagram that you see right here. Um, notice that this is a set of parallel lines, and we call this a transversal. So we're going to look at a few different things on here. Um, the first thing, I want to go over a few definitions before we start defining our angles. And what we have is, what are parallel lines? And parallel lines are simply lines that do not intersect. Now, when I say intersect, um, it also means another way of saying intersect. You could say lines that do not cross. Let me go ahead and just make this a box. So intersect is the same thing as cross. The lines just don't cross each other. They don't touch. Now, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the parallel lines real quick just so you see where they are. So the parallel lines right here. Or those two lines. Now those two lines will never cross each other. They run, they have the same slope and they will go eternally without intersecting or crossing. And so therefore they're defined as parallel lines. Now the next thing we need to talk about is a transversal. So notice it says a line that intersects two or more lines. In other words, if we had a transversal, we could have three lines and we could have a line that crosses them. That would be my transversal. Or we might just have two lines and have a line that crosses. And that's what we would call transversal. So in this diagram, the transversal is this line right here that I'm going to highlight pink. So anytime I say transversal, I'm speaking specifically of that line. Next, we're going to look at what are alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles. Now notice yesterday we went over alternate or not alternate, we went over exterior angles and now we're going to talk about alternate exterior. So when we say alternate exterior it's just an exterior angle that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. So when we say opposite sides I'm actually talking about for instance angle, and I'm going to draw an angle sign, 1 and angle 8. It's just to give you an example. So I'm going to go ahead and shade those in just so you can see. For instance, here's angle 1. Yesterday we did some shading in on these two, on the exterior angles. And it's alternate or opposite angle, that's also an exterior angle, it is going to be angle 8. And notice because they're on opposite sides of the transversal. The pink line is my transversal. I have one on the left side and one on the right side. So these are alternate exterior angles. So another set of alternate exterior angles would be angle 2 and angle 7. So I'm going to make this angle like a little bit bigger so that it don't look exactly the same. So, for instance, I can shade in angle 2, that's on the right side, and I can shade in angle 7, that's on my left side. So those are 2 and 7 are alternate exterior angles, and 1 and 8 are alternate exterior angles. So now we need to look at what are alternate interior angles. So there, the interior, there are interior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. Now remember when we talked about interior angles we said that they're the angles that are inside the trans the parallel lines inside. So we need to look at those and find the ones that are alternating. So for example on these we could say that they are angles 3 and I'm going to put me a little mark here, angle mark and 6 because they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So we're going to put angle 3 and angle 6. So I'm going to go ahead and shade those in. Now we could also say we have another set of alternate interior angles. For instance we could say that we have angle 4 
and angle 5. So angle 4 and angle 5. I'm going to shade those in as well and I want you to shade them in too. You can shade them in with your pencil. Make sure that you're writing them down so that you have it. We have our alternate interior that I've done in red. And then we have our alternate exterior that I've done in blue. Now, there is another set of angle that we're going to have to deal with. Some of you asked yesterday because we, we talked about it just very briefly. And they are called corresponding angles. So you know, when we were looking at corresponding, uh, we weren't looking at angles, but we are actually looking at sides of triangles. And we said that this side of a triangle corresponds to the other, which means they're just in the same relative position. So these are angles that have the same relative position. At each intersection where a straight line crosses. So let me give you an example of some corresponding angles. For instance, if I look at angle... 2 and I wanted to know what angle is in the same relative position so I'm going to use my red pen for this to kind of shade the angle in because we're talking about corresponding angles and the angle that's in the same relative position notice this is in the top right position so I'm going to put TR for top right another angle that's in the top right if I go down that's in the bottom right this one right here is in the top right so I'm going to shade this in a little bit red. So 2 and 6 are corresponding angles. So let's go ahead and write angle 2. And we'll put an and sign, angle 6. Now, we can take this a step further. We can also say angle 1 right here. This is the top left angle. And it corresponds to the top left down here, which is angle 5 top left. So I'm putting TL for top left. I'm just abbreviating. So we could say angle 1 corresponds to angle 5. And then if we wanted to we take it a step further we could say well 4 that's the bottom right angle. So BR for bottom right. And I could also say the one that's bottom right is number is angle 8 so this is the bottom right so we can say angle 4 corresponds to angle 8 and then last of all we could say 3 is at the bottom left because it's below a line below a parallel line and it's on the left and then we could say 7 is below a parallel line and it is on the left so bottom left. So angle 3 and angle 7. And these are all the angles that you have to define for 8th grade. So we have alternate exterior angles. Right? So for instance 2 and 7, 1 and 8. We have alternate interior angles. 4 and 5, 3 and 6. And then we have corresponding angles which are top right, top right, top left and top left, bottom right, bottom right, and bottom left and bottom left. Now, knowing all this information, we can now use this to complete the assignment that's below and it's on the back. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have below. I'm going to move this up a little bit. All right. So down here it says, when given one angle on a set of parallel lines cut by a transversal, how do I solve for the other missing angles? And so notice I have here, use the theorem that best fits the situation. Well, the theorems that we have, what we're talking about is the relationship in angles. Alternate exterior angles, alternate interior angles are corresponding. Now, when we say alternate exterior, not only do we say these angles have a relationship, for instance, 2 and 7, but they are actually the same value. So whatever the number is for 2, it's congruent to angle 7. Whatever the number is for angle 1, it is the same angle for number 8. They are equal to each other. And for instance, in 4 and 5, whatever the angle of 4 is, the angle of 5 has to be that same amount. 
And whatever the angle 6 at 3 is, it's going to be equal or congruent to angle 6. So that's the reason that we make these definitions of these different types of angles, because they all have a relationship and they are all equal to each other if they are in a relationship. So, and I'm going to give you an example. If I said that angle 2, I'm going to do an example right here. If I said, well, let me just, I'll write it down below. We said if angle 2 is 10, then angle 7 has to be 10. If angle 1 is 20, then angle 8 would have to be 20. So that's the relationship. If they're alternate exterior, they're congruent. So I want you to write the word right here. Congruent angles. If they're alternate interior, they're congruent angles. It just means they're the same. They're equivalent. If they're corresponding angles, they're also congruent angles. So just keep that in mind. That's the reason we make these definitions, and it's important to understand the relationship, is because you can figure out the value of an angle by using one of these definitions. And that's what we're going to do down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and try that now. And we're going to use the theorem that best fits the situation. We're either going to be using alternate in exterior, alternate interior, or corresponding. So let's take a look at this set of parallel lines with the transversal. Notice it says it wants us to find the missing angle. It has a question mark right there. I'm going to go ahead and determine what type of angle that is. I'm going to use my blue color because I recognize this is a exterior angle. So I'm going to use my definition of exterior angles, alternate exterior angles. So the opposite side exterior angle would be right here, which is 110. Because of that, if it wanted to know the angle, I, I'm going to write my definition. I'm going to use the definition of alternate, alternate exterior. So therefore, my question mark, my angle, is going to be equal to 110 degrees. And I know this because by definition of alternate exterior angles, this angle up here is congruent with the angle that's on the opposite side of the transversal and is also an outside angle. So by alternate exterior angles, I know that my answer is 110 degrees. So this angle up here is 110 degrees as well. So let's go ahead and let's do this one. Now notice this one has a variable in it, so we're going to have to set up an equation. So I hope that you're looking at this and you're going, this looks like an interior angle. And they are on opposite sides. So this one is going to be, by definition, alternate interior. And what I can do, since I know my rule says that alternate interior angles are congruent, right? Alternate interior angles are congruent. So let me go ahead and shade it in. This is one of my angles right here. And on the opposite side, because it's alternate interior, this is the other one. Now this one's not going to be as easy. I do know that this one up here has to be equal to this one down here. So if this is 132, this has to be 132. And in here they want me to solve for the missing value, which is x. So if I'm going to solve for x, I'm just going to create an equation out of this. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, this first one is x plus 139. So x plus 139. And that's going to be equal to the alternate interior angle, which is 132 degrees. So 1, 3, 2. So now if I wanted to solve this, I could do this by hand, right, by subtracting 139 from both sides. Or I could just go ahead and solve for x by putting it in numerical solve. Which today, um, you're welcome to use numerical solve if you want, and you're welcome to do it by hand, whatever you prefer. So if I get my calculator, and I put it up here, and I go to calculate. And uh, a bit hard to see right there. If I go to calculate. I can go ahead and hit menu, go down to algebra, and in numerical solve, hit enter. And I'm just going to put this equation I made inside of there. So we have x plus 139 equals, and then 132. And then you'll put comma x, because you want it to solve for x. And it tells me 
that x must be equal to negative 7. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. On the next one, I hope that you realize again, this is an interior angle, and they are on opposite sides. We have the question mark on one side, and, and I'm going to change that to a variable x. Let's change that to an x. Let's say that we were dealing with x's on all of these. I think you're used to seeing an x more so than a question mark. All right, so if that's an x, I hope that you realize again, this is, by definition, alternate x interior angle. So I'm going to write alternate interior and to solve this notice on this one all I had to do is recognize that these are interior angles so I'm going to go ahead and shade them in and in this case it's just straightforward x must be equal to 84 degrees so I'm going to put x is equal to 84 degrees and that's by definition of an alternate interior angle. So now, let's go ahead and flip it over to the back. You're going to be using these examples and this information you have on the front to solve the problems on the back. I'm going to get you started. So let's take a look right here. So on this one, when it says classify each pair of angles as either alternate interior alternate exterior are corresponding so you're just going to define the angle and you can look back at your picture so for instance we have three and six so I'm going to go ahead and shade in three and six so right here we have three and let's see what color we use because I'm realizing that's an outside angle so we use blue for our exterior angles so I'm going to shade it real quick we have three and we have six so I hope you realize on this one if we're trying to figure out what three and six I hope you recognize there are exterior angles and they're on opposite sides of the transversal and so we're gonna go ahead and define that as alternate and I do want you to write the word out do not abbreviate on this exterior Now you'll do the same for all the rest of these angles. You're going to find the relationship, and if it helps you, you can shade them in. Look back at the diagram on the front side of your notes, and you will define each one of these. Once you're done, you're going to move this up. I want you to go ahead, and you're going to move on to these problems, 7 through 10. And on problem number 7, it says refer to the figure at the right. Line A is parallel, so it's telling you line A is parallel to line B. In other words, my parallel lines are these, and I'm going to highlight yellow right here. And then it says, and the measure of angle 2 is 145 degrees. Okay, well they got a 2 here. That means this angle is 145 degrees. So angle 2 is 145. That is an interior angle, so I'm going to shade it real quick, red. So this is an interior angle, and it's 145. Now, it says determine each given measure and justify your answer. So you do have to write an excuse or an explanation of why you know your answer is correct. And on number 7, it says the measure of angle 9. Okay, well let me see. I have to figure out the measure of angle 9, which is right here. So now, I do run into an issue here because um, I'm not sure what angle 9 is. So I'm going to have to do some work. I hope that you realize there is a right angle sign right here and remember if there is a right angle sign right at angle 10 that means this part is 90 degrees so I'm going to shade in that angle that's an exterior angle so this part of the angle right here is 90 degrees because they got a right angle sign in there and what I'm trying to find is the other part I'm trying to find this 9 right here I want to know how much is this section so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to write an equation based off of this. I'm going to go ahead and say that if I'm missing an angle, I'm going to call that angle B. Are you, well, we can call it X. Let's say angle 9 is X. Let's put a variable X in there. We're trying to find X, which is 9. 
So what I have is, I have this angle right here, I have this angle down here, and these angles are called vertical angles. So I want you to go ahead and write vertical angles. We didn't talk about this kind, but this is one more angle and it will help you in this situation. And vertical angles are congruent. And anytime they're vertical, it just means they share a common point. We talked a little bit about that whenever we did the triangles. We're solving for triangles, and we said if there's two triangles and they're t the tips of them touch, the angles on both sides are going to be congruent. Now, when I talk about that angle, I'm talking about the entire angle. So all the way around to this side. So x plus 90 must be equal to 145. So we can write an equation. and I'm gonna, That's going to be part of our justification. So we got x plus 90 is equal to 145. So again, we'd have to solve this, right? We can use numerical solve to solve this, or we can do it by hand. So we did menu, algebra, numerical solve, and we're going to go ahead and put in x plus 90 is equal to 145 comma x and that gives me 55 so x must be 55 degrees and then how we're going to say this well I'm telling you that there's something called a vertical angle so that you know that definition and so for my justification I'm going to say by definition of a vertical angle.